The Orioneers built a free-flying model, and they made a film for Ted Taylor to take to Washington to show to the disbelievers. After the film, he said there was most marvelous silence. You could hear the pin drop because they were all proven wrong. And there it was, and nobody can argue with it. It worked like a charm. First time we tried it, the thing took off like bat out of hell and flew. There's a film that shows this thing going bang, 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 and up it goes away. At least that part of it worked. <laughs> One of the things was always the worry about the stability of the system, which that test proved. It managed to give people a little bit of an idea just what this thing would look like. It gave you a real good idea what are these guys trying to do. Even now, the only way we could get large payloads around the solar system is by something like Orion, because atomic bombs contain thousands of times more energy, indeed almost millions of times more energy, than any of the chemicals that we use in our existing rockets, you know, like hydrogen and oxygen. They're feeble compared with the energies of an atomic bomb. So when you talk of sending hundreds of tons or even thousands of tons a payload, including human beings, from to Mars, say, that's the only way we could do it, even now. The space age hasn't begun yet. I believe the time will come when very few members of the human race will be able to point to the part of the sky where the Earth is. I'm still very strongly interested in spreading life outside the Earth. Humans, of course, should go along, but the most, I mean, the most important thing to me is just enlarging the, the domain of life. And life has this marvelous adaptability. It's able to adapt itself to almost anything. And so it's hardly begun yet, adapting itself to the universe. This little planet doesn't give it so much scope. In 1965, Freeman Dyson published an impassioned article in the journal Science entitled Death of a Project. The story of Orion, he wrote, is significant because this is the first time in modern history that a major expansion of human technology has been suppressed for political reasons. But those who've worked on Project Orion must continue to hope that they may see their work bear fruit in their own lifetimes. They cannot lose sight of the dream which fired their imaginations in 1958 and sustained them through the years of struggle afterward. The dream that the bombs which killed and maimed at Nagasaki and Hiroshima may one day open the skies to mankind. <laughs>